Hi, today we are gonna go through a mod called BuildBits. It's a mod for Starfield designed specifically to add more build mechanics as well as props or bits. And some minor outpost tweaks that will have more functions in the future. First we look at how to get the mod files and start build bits. So if you have done this already, feel free to skip ahead. To get the mod files, head over to nexusmods.com, search for build bits and click on it to get there. Don't forget to look at the description, it has information about functions, updates and such beyond the how to use section. Click on the tab that says files and note that Nexus check files to make sure that they are safe. The browser or your computer might warn you anyway just because they come from an unknown source. Under main files, start the download by clicking mod manager download or manual download. I'm going with manual. Again, it can warn sometimes like in this example. If this happens, just click here, then here to download. Once downloaded, if you went with a manual, you'll have a file that looks something like this. If you see the file extension, it says it's a zip file, or you can see the zipper on the icon. Unzip it by right clicking it and then click extract here. If you used Vortex, the files are unzipped already and they are in Starfield's directory. When that's done, a new folder will be created with BuildBits app inside, the .exe file with the green icon and an H. This launches build bits, just double click to start the mod. You can start it at any point before you start Starfield or hours after running it. No need to put these in the Starfield directory. You can have build bits files anywhere on your computer as long as these are together. You can run build bits from any location. When you first open up build bits, this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and close all of these controls. We'll get to them later. But for right now, just fold them by clicking on this arrow. Hold and drag on this button and you can reposition the window to wherever you find it the most convenient. And lastly, to minimize build bits, you just click on this button and it will give you a side panel so it's easy to access whenever you need it. Also, if you have the window unfolded, the one with all the button controls, you can have just that showing without the bigger window being in the way. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's actually look at what BuildBit does. The first thing that I need you to do is open up the console window. The first time you do that, you will get this pop-up warning you achievements will be disabled. There are mods that can re-enable them. That might be worth considering, like Baka Achievement Enabler. But for now, just close the console window using the same key that opens it. Hit E to close the pop-up and open the console window back up. The reason we need it open is because BuildBits works through using commands. You'll see what I mean here soon. Let's spawn something in. On the BuildBits overlay, click where it says BuildBits. It's a button to open up a menu with categories. Just click on any of them to see what you can spawn. Some have several tabs you can go between. Here you even have a few buildings. But let's go into BitKits category for now. There are tooltips to help you see what things are. Not just here, but on most buttons to help guide you. All the tabs, as long as they are active, are scrollable with a mouse wheel and you can drag to make them show more. Okay, so let's spawn one of these in. Just click on the bit that you want and I'll go with this doorway. All I have to do is click on the image. And if you keep an eye out in the console window, it's writing commands to spawn the bit in. You don't need to understand them, but if you're curious, it's placing it, selecting it, and rotating it. Though, um, where is it? It is already there, but to see it, just close the console. 
There it is. And that's it for spawning in a bit. So, say you added a few things to it, but they just don't line up. And since these weren't built without post mode, you can't just pick them up and move around. That's where these buttons comes in. And again, we don't need the other window right now, so we can just go ahead and minimize it. Holding on this button also works to move this around. So just have it open somewhere. The first thing we need to look at here is how to select the object you want to move. Clicking on anything selects it, and you can see the reference ID here. Clicking it again deselects it. But it is hard to know it selects the right thing when you can't see what is picked. And that's where this button comes in. It's a setting that enables a highlight on selected reference. So enabling it will make anything you pick in console mode a bright purple. Let's see what happens when we click on it. Now if you paid attention, you see it did do something. So let's select this again. Nice and clear. Now I will know whenever I move or change anything, I'm doing it to the right object. And as long as the console window is open, I just click on anything to select it. But sometimes it selects a ref nearby instead, using the scroll wheel cycles through nearby objects. If I click on this bush, for example, it picks something else. So if I just use the scroll wheel now, you can see it cycles nearby objects and eventually highlights this bush. And yes, you can move, duplicate and change most other things, not just the items you spawn in. But be careful, objects that are connected to quests, NPCs, areas, stuff like that can break if changed. Or create a giant hole in the world, which is not as fun as it sounds like. ABS, always be saving, anything can happen. Anyway, now we can start moving things around. Arrow buttons move whatever is highlighted. Occasionally the command doesn't send. Like here, it's written out but not sent. It's something I'm working on improving over time. If this happens, just hit enter to send it. It can be a bit tricky to understand the directions of move controls. They move with what the world settings are, so not the angle you're looking at them. It takes a little getting used to, but you always know the opposite button will move it in the other direction. And everything spawned in moves in the same direction so they are easier to line up. If you see clipping like this, horrible flickering, I hate that. It's when things perfectly lined up, the game doesn't know which texture to put on top. So nudge one of them to make it stop. Pressing the wrong button still tells me which one is the right one if I lose track of direction. Ha, <sighs> much better. So I went ahead and spawned in this roof bit, but as you can see, it didn't spawn in anywhere near the wall. Sure, I could keep pressing buttons to get it there, but this would take forever. If we look down here, we can see one click moves it 0 0.1. This slider changes that value for all the buttons on here. Let's give it a go. Just drag the slider up and click on the button again. That definitely changed how far it moved. Now instead of 0 0.1, it's 1.5. Let's try it at the highest and see how far that moves it. Just drag it up to max and click on the button. Perfect, but it's still rotated the wrong way. So let's try the rotate button while this is highlighted. It's also affected by the slider, so while it's on max, it moved things by 4.50 and it will rotate objects 90 degrees. Just click this, and again, if it doesn't send, just hit enter. Rotating twice with the slider on max will turn it around 180 degrees. If you're in fly cam or outpost top view, this is easier. You will see better if it lines up. 
but we now know how to fine tune and can adjust moving to get the bits in the right position. And if it seems like a lot, don't worry, you get used to them pretty quickly. And in the meantime, I develop this further. And we'll soon have things like fly cam, move one bit to another, make prop bigger or smaller, and I have many more plans. Now all we need is to adjust the height. And you probably guessed already that this lowers and this raises the highlighted prop. Like the other controls, the slider changes how much one click moves. I think you get the idea of these now. I just want to go over a few more things before we wrap up. Let's try spawning in a shed for this. They spawn with two props, the structure and the roof. Sometimes commands can mess up, and usually you can see something is off here, especially if it says something wasn't saved. Yep, nothing spawned. Let's try again. Not working properly this time either, but one of the two props were still spawned. The building, but not the roof. Oh well, just a happy little accident. Like me. Almost made it through without revealing my terrible sense of humor. Anyway, now I can show you how to remove bits. Make sure you highlight the object you want to remove, then hit this button. It will disable it, but you need to close the console window to see the effect. There's nothing here, visually or any collision, but technically it still exists, just hidden. And since I still have it selected, I can enable it again, just by typing enable. If I didn't have it selected, enable with its ID would also work to enable it. It will make the bit appear when closing console window. This means disabled objects still exist and can make the game get lag if there are many of them. So I'll tell you how to permanently remove something, but I do mean permanently. So be careful and make sure you do it on the right thing. And again, ABS, always be saving. Select the object you want gone, disable it so it will be removed immediately as well. Then you type mark for delete in console. And again, to see the change, close console window. Now it will be gone forever. Typing enable won't change it. Okay, I have one more button here to talk about. Duplicate, spawning a copy of something. This too works on anything you can highlight, not just bits. But it will spawn the copy where you are standing. Like this, and you need to close the console window to see it. It will factor in if there are other things there before, but tries to spawn as close to you as possible. One more to show. 